Hi there YouTube, go down back once again with another tech video, this time talking about replacing your Superhub 3 from Virgin Media with an alternative router. In this case, I'm using the Netgear Nighthawk X4S, and I'll explain a little bit why in a minute. So before I go into why I've actually opted to replace the Superhub 3 with a different router, I just want to show you how I've connected the two routers together. So the Virgin Superhub 3 now acts like a modem, so that brings in the internet and then outputs it through the top ethernet port on the back. And that yellow ethernet cable just runs straight from the back of the Superhub 3 into the back of a WAN port on the Netgear router. And that means that the internet is now going from the Hub 3 into the Netgear and then the Netgear is doing all of the traffic management that outputs it to my other devices, things like mobile phones, playstations and etc. And the big reason behind changing to modem mode and then putting my own router is traffic management. The Superhub 3 is kind of terrible at it, it's on a first come first serve basis, whatever asks for the internet gets it at that moment in time that it needs it, and it can mean stopping your internet traffic or slightly delaying it from going where you want it to go. For example, you're trying to play on your PlayStation and somebody else in your home comes along and decides, oh, well, I'm going to watch Netflix. Now, what will happen is your bandwidth that should be routed to your PlayStation automatically gets routed to the laptop or the telly or whatever's watching Netflix instead, and that interrupts your game, adds latency, creates ping spikes, all sorts of absolute madness. So, installing the Netgear, it actually has this cool feature called quality of service. Now, I'm not saying this Netgear router is the one you've got to go out and get. There are other options, things like the ASUS. Um, they have ones that add things like WT Fast as well as quality of service. And it's all about knowing what you're after. The, the ASUS routers were nearly twice the price. They are supposed to be some of the best ones out there. But for what I wanted it to do, I just wanted purely that traffic management that's going to stop my internet connection from being interrupted on the PlayStation when anybody else needs to do something with the internet, say if they're just browsing my pages, wanting to watch YouTube, it's not going to affect in any way, shape or form my PlayStation's internet traffic. So now I'm going to take you through the setup of how you actually activate modem mode on your router. It's quite simple. You just open up your normal web browser and go to the home page here. Um, it's 192.168.0.1 for those of you who've never done it before. And the password here, now that's actually on the bottom of your router, or if you've been here before, we'll have asked you to change it, so hopefully you remember what that is. Once you get onto the Rooters homepage, you're going to see something a bit like this. Now you might notice I've got less options on the left than what you're seeing, and that's just because I've already enabled modem mode. But you'll still have an option there that says, literally, modem mode. Just click on it, tick enabled, click apply. You do get a couple of warning screens, just, you know, accept, and you're good to go. And if you do opt for the Netgear Nighthawk router like I have for this traffic management policies, you do have to actually turn them on. And you've just got to take a second or two to go to the Rooters homepage, and do that. And it's a little different, it's 192.168.1.1 and it has its own username and password system which or any booklet, it'll be admin and then there's a password on there that you'll have to change the first time you log on. But once you get on, just go to quality of service, tick dynamic cause and then run a little speed test, it'll put your uh, broadband speeds in there and then what it does is it'll actually self-manage based on device that's connecting so say you're gaming away on your PlayStation, it'll go, oh, you're gaming away, and it'll calculate how much bandwidth they need to do that, so it'll say maybe give you 50 meg, and then somebody else who's connecting with their Netflix, and they want 20 meg, they'll get 20 meg, and it'll still know you've got another 150 meg of bandwidth to play with for other devices, and it won't actually take away from one of those devices, unless it absolutely has to. And one last thing I've done here is I've actually set my PlayStation 4 device to the highest priority for its internet connection. And all that means is its bandwidth is going to be the least likely to be interrupted for any particular need. So if for whatever reason someone does manage to load a whole series of streaming windows, they're connected to YouTube, Netflix, Twitch, loads of different sites all at the same time, it's still not going to interrupt the bandwidth on my PlayStation over a lower priority device. So everything else I've got is just set to medium and the PlayStation set the highest. And that's done just by going into Attach Devices, select a new device, and click on the priority. And it's that simple. Once you're done, hit Apply, and you should be good to go. There are a couple of other things I would mention. Um, you can open up ports for the PlayStation Network service. Always advisable to go ahead and do that to give you the best NAT type you can get. But, you know, that's not necessarily something you've got to do if you want to keep your security high. You don't have to change that. It's just 
the quality of service setting and this device priority that's going to give you maximum potential for your gaming traffic. And if you made it this far through the video, just like to say thanks very much for watching. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask away and I'll answer them when I can. And thanks for your time. Bye.